Hello, my name's Cathy Pearson and I'm an interpreter in the English booth at the Skik. I'm going to be talking to you today about traffic <clears throat> and the problems in the UK with traffic jams and traffic congestion. Looking at the problems first and then going on to look at the solutions that the Labour government tried to, to put in place and look at what might be done in the future. I will now begin. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you've driven in the UK recently. I'm from the UK myself, obviously, and drive back there quite frequently to visit my family who live up in the north of England. So it's quite a long journey. And I have to say that whenever I'm planning this journey, I get quite worried about the timing because the time at which you hit the big motorways like the M25 Ring Road motorway around London is crucial. If you hit it at the wrong time, you could get stuck there for hours and hours. So there are big problems in the UK. Always the part in Belgium goes quite smoothly and as soon as I hit the UK, more often than not, I get stuck in a traffic jam. And it's not just my bad luck or my imagination. Statistics say that the UK is in fact the most congested country in, the, in Europe. And the traffic problems are almost four times worse than in Belgium. For example, in the UK, 20% of main trunk roads are congested for more than one hour a day. Whereas in Belgium, that figure is only 5%. The Brits also apparently spend twice as long as the Italians commuting to work and back every day. Now, sitting in a traffic jam and getting stuck in traffic is not just a nuisance to drivers. It also has a big impact on the economy in terms of loss of working time. In fact, estimates put these losses to the economy uh, at as high as £20 billion a year. So it is a very big problem and a problem that successive governments have tried to solve. I'd like to focus on what the Labour government tried to do between the years 2000 and 2010. Obviously now in the UK, since May 2010, we have a different government. We have the coalition Conservative Lib Dems government, uh, but they are carrying on the policies that Labour ended up um, agreeing to by 2010. The problem with the Labour government was that they kept changing their minds about what the best solution was. In the year 2000, they launched their 10-year transport plan, the aim of which was to reduce traffic on UK roads by 6% by the end of 2010. However, when they got to 2010, they saw that that had not worked, so they abandoned the plan and in fact, congestion has only risen in those last 10 years. Back in the year 2000, the Labour government said at the time that building more and bigger roads was not the answer to the problem. However, by the end of the decade, they were doing precisely that. They were widening uh, some of the most congested motorways, for example, the M1 motorway, which I have to take when I go up north because it's the motorway that runs from London up to the north of England. And they're now widening that to put in an extra lane on the motorway. So those are solutions that that government came up with. But what other solutions are there? I believe that there are other solutions which the Labour government and the current government have shied away from. The first thing they need to do is to make public transport cheaper and better. But if anything, prices have gone up and standards have gone down. 
and the government would have to undertake huge investments to turn public transport around. They really need to do this, though, because if they had a better, more performant public transport system, people, more people would take public transport, and so there would be fewer cars on the road. It would also be a more environmentally friendly solution. So that's one option. The second option is road pricing, i.e. charging drivers for using the roads, charging tolls. And this has happened in London. The independent mayor of London, um, Ken Livingston, he was the mayor at the time, introduced the congestion charging to London, charging vehicles for driving into the city. And that policy has been carried on by his uh, successor, the Tory mayor, Boris Johnson. But whilst congestion charging has been put in place in London, it hasn't been extended to other cities elsewhere, which is something that I think the government should think about. Because the effect of congestion charging is to dissuade drivers from taking their cars. And I think that that would be a good idea. But of course, if you dissuade them from taking their cars, you have to offer them a viable solution in terms of better public transport. However, the Labour government didn't extend congestion charging or road pricing, and nor will this government, because they are put under too much pressure by big drivers' lo lobbies who are too powerful. But I believe that ultimately that's the only way that the government can go, to have road pricing plus investment in public transport if we're to avoid serious traffic congestion or even gridlock in the future. Thank you.